Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of videos covering how to make a Diablo-like action RPG. This is a top-down type RPG game and we're going to focus on a few key aspects of this genre of game. We're going to first of all focus on movement and controls and then go on to do combat and then finally tackle some of the more RPG elements such as like looting and collecting items from our enemies. So let's get started off with movement. In this episode, we're going to go through and talk about how to set up movement with WASD as well as click to move as well, making it able so we can move our character with clicking and interrupt that movement with WASD if we need to. So let's get started and take a look. So we're going to get started with our action RPG Diablo like game uh, with a third person template. And with this template, we're going to first of all set up the camera uh, and controls to work in relation to what we want to do with it. So <clears throat> we're going to go into our player character. And the first thing we want to do is head over to its viewport. And you're going to click on the camera boom. The camera boom is a spring arm. And a spring arm is basically a big stick with a camera on the end of it. And what we're going to do here is angle it up. So it's up in the air. Now, the problem you'll find straight away when you try and do this is nothing will happen. The reason why you see that is because there's an option ticked on that we need to turn off. And that is use pawn control rotation. This is basically saying override whatever rotation you have on it to use whatever control rotation the pawn has been set. So if we turn that off, you'll see it snap to the position that we have set it to here. So I'm going to set it to, let's say, minus 60. Maybe that'll do. And I'm going to change the target arm length here to be a bit more uh, drawn out. Okay, so it's a bit further out from the player. So I'm going to try and do that as 800. The other thing we need to turn off on here is because we're not using pawn control rotation, we want this thing to stay basically still. We don't want it to be uh, moving around as the player is turning around. So in the options down here for camera settings, you'll see inherent yaw. So you turn this one off. And that means that this, as the character rotates, this won't follow. It'll basically keep its locked rotation in. So hit compile and we're done there. We're then going to head over to the event graph. And what we need to change in here is our movement input. At the moment, our movement input is using a right vector and a forward vector for my control rotation. This is no longer accurate anymore because we're not using a turnable camera. So we can't decide a rotation that way. It said rotation is fixed to a, a fixed axis. So this actually makes this a lot easier because we just delete these and replace them with hard values in our world direction. So in the left right one, add movement input, we're going to put in the wire here as one. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. And for forward and backwards, we're going to get rid of these two and we're going to put one in the X. Hit compile and save that. Okay, so now let's jump into the game and see what we're looking at. So now we've got a character in the game and I can use WASD to move my character around in this sort of fixed camera location set up here. Okay. We're just looking pretty good. So one of the key things about these action RPG Diablo games is that we actually have access to both uh, movement inputs with WASD, but also we're going to have make it use the mouse as well because this will be how you select or not uh, click on items and do click to move if you need to click to move as well So how does that work? Well, first of all, we need to make our mouse visible So for that we use a custom player controller So we're going to go into our folders down here right click go to blueprint class and choose a new player controller And we're going to call this one action RPG controller and we're going to go to my game mode, which is this third person game mode here. And change the player controller class to use my action RPG controller. Compile and save that. So now on this action RPG controller, if we click on this. We're going to change a couple of things on this. And you just go to the class defaults. And all we can do is go down to the show mouse cursor option. I'm going to turn that on. And we're also going to enable click events. So turn that on as well. Uh, mouse over events we could do as well if you want to do things like um, showing tooltips when you hover over certain items or enemies. We can turn that on too. 
And if you ever wanted to change what keys are the clickable events, you just click, change the click key events here. But by default, you're given the left mouse button for you. But if you want to do like right, right mouse button clicks, that's where you add that here too. We're not going to bother with that because we don't need to. So that'll do that. And if I hit play now, my mouse cursor is visible. Okay. Now, the mouse cursor, we want it to click somewhere to move my character. Okay, so we can, and again, we're supporting WSD and automatic movement. So for that, we have to use AI. So what we're going to do is use a nav mesh, first of all. So let's drag out our nav mesh volume and cover the environment with it. And you can test this out by hitting the P key on your keyboard to indicate where the nav mesh has been generated. And that's looking pretty good to me. So in order for our mouse click to be registered when we click on anywhere in the environment, we have to uh, set up an input first of all. So let's go over to our inputs folder and let's add a new input to this. So go to input, input action, IA, click. And that's all we're gonna need to do there. And we're gonna go now to the default context and add it to our mappings. So we click add, choose from the drop down our IA click, and then we use the mouse click to indicate on our uh, mapping here. So we close that and that's good to go. So now if I go to my player controller, I can search for the IA click event. Now, when I do click, I do want to trace down and find out whereabouts in the world I'm actually clicking. We're going to search for hit, uh, hit result, sorry, hit result. And you'll see hit result under cursor by channel. So I'm going to click on this. And what this does, it does a line trace basically from the cursor into the world, looking at the trace channel of visibility. And when it does this, it's going to return a hit result with a return value. So we can put that return value into our branch here and trigger that there. Okay. Next, once we've got that, we need to get that location and get its nav uh, nav location on the map. So we take hit result here, break it open. Oh, click again, break it open. And we're now going to take the location that's here. Now, once we've got a location, we need to tell our player character to not be controlled by the player anymore, but controlled by AI instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to take from this uh, our controlled pawn. Get controlled pawn. And then from that, we're going to do spawn default controller. We then take from this controlled pawn here. And we'll do AI move to. And this will be the pawn pin. So drag that down to the pawn pin. And we'll move it to the destination of this location here. So one issue you'll find with this is that the move to won't actually do anything. So I could test it out. You can see for yourself. If I hit play, I click on the environment, nothing happens. Now, the reason why nothing happens is because we're trying to tell it to move the AI, even though our player controller is currently possessing it. So we have to tell it to be unpossessed. So on this action RPG controller, with the unpossess, it's controlled pawn. So unpossess, like that. Now, the problem with this is, this is gonna trigger, is get controlled pawn will now return a null value because we're not controlling any pawn. So we need to know who we're trying to control at all times. So I'm gonna take this reference, cut that from there and go up to begin play. This is on the controller still. And on the pawn here, we're going to promote that to a variable. And we'll do player controlled character. And put that there. I then go back down to my click event. And when I've, after I've unprocessed it, the spawn default controller is now going to use this reference here. Now this works because this reference has now been saved. So it doesn't get it lost when we unprocess it. So connect it up to the AI move to and hit compile and save. And let's now test this out again. And we're gonna see another issue. And you see if I click, it moves, but the camera's broken. Now the reason why the camera breaks is because our controller automatically, and all controllers do this, automatically try to adjust which camera you're looking through 
based upon who you're possessing. And if you're not possessing anyone, then it's not going to look for anything. But you can actually turn that setting off. And that's found in class defaults. So go to class defaults on your controller. And up the top, you'll see auto manage active camera target. You know, turn that off. But what that means is that we have to manually tell it which cam to look through. So right on start on begin play, get controlled pawn. We're going to drag from there and do set view target with blend. And then once we've done the blend there, we're going to go down to the AI move to and do the blend here too. So you do get controlled character, set view target with blend. And we just leave that as is. Okay. Now, once it's finished in AI move 2, we want to repossess the char character again. So on success here, we're going to do possess. And the pawn we're going to possess is our player controlled pawn. Okay, and then we go into the game. And I can click and move. And then once it's finished moving, I can then move my character. But let's say we want to interject and stop our character from moving when we use WSD. So if I'm clicking and moving, I push WSD, I want it to interrupt that. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to go to the uh, controller here. I'm going to do IA move. So this is the input that happens whenever we trigger our button pushes for our movement. So if we are triggering this and we currently have are not con possessing any controlled pawn, so if I do get controlled pawn and do is valid on this result here, I can easily say when I'm started this that is, I want to then trigger the possession early. Okay, so we're going to, to tell our possess here. I'm going to copy that and I'll put that back over here. So it's valid. Possess that. Uh, sorry, if it's not if it's not valid, sorry. Possess it. So compile, save, push play. So if I push WSD while moving, I can interrupt the movement that is taking and stop the AI from taking control. And there we go. We've now got the start of our movement in our game. Next, we're going to work on our movement a bit more. and We'll be adding in a rooting motion so we can hold down like the shift key, for example, to make the character stand still and then rotate to follow the mouse when we click and drag the mouse around. This will later on help us with the combat when we want to do like stationary combat, such as casting spells or attacking uh, characters from all different directions. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in me and the channel. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.